Hi BookTube, it's Eleanor here and today I am doing my Walker Books book haul. I was really lucky and I was invited to the recent Walker Books event. Uh, this was to showcase some of the authors that are either new debut authors or authors that are bringing out new books um, in the next few months and towards the beginning of next year. And so it was very, very exciting. Um, it was on a Saturday up in London. So my husband had my daughter for the day and I had the whole day. And um, because the event finished at 12 and I wanted to make the most of having a day to myself, I thought, well, I'll just pop to Forbidden Planet and look for a few comics that I want. And I bought some stuff. And then I thought, well, you know, it's good to get some exercise. I'll walk from, from Forbidden Planet to King's Cross Station. It's about a 45 minute walk, but it'd be a good walk and it'd be good to get some fresh air. I passed a lot of bookshops. Uh, went into quite a few bookshops. Quite proud of myself, I restrained myself until I went to um, an Oxfam bookshop that pretty much had every book that was on my wish list. <laughs> So I bought a lot of books in there. So first of all, I'm going to take you through the reason why I was in London and the Walker Books books, uh, tell you a little bit about them. And then I'm going to take you through the comics I bought in Forbidden Planet and the books that I bought in Oxfam books. So the first book that uh, we heard about was called The Dark Days Club. This is by um, Alison Goodman, who also wrote Aeon and Aeona, which a, a dragon duology I think and I haven't read them I think I've got Aeon on my shelf so I must get to that as well um it was really great to hear her talk and I'm always amazed when you hear authors talk about how much research goes into the book because we all know that sort of fiction is imaginative and it comes from the author's imagination but they also do a lot of research into um the era or um the plot or you know whatever it is that's sort of taken them into this book and it was really interesting to hear from her. Alison said she really wanted to get into the Regency period, which is where she set this book. And so um, she got full Regency costume. She started taking dancing classes and just really got involved in it to give herself a bit of an immersive experience so that she could understand how she wanted her characters to, well, to act and how they would act in certain situations, especially at sort of dances. So a brief um, synopsis of this book. It's about uh, Lady Helen and she is just about to make her debut into society. Um, they, call, they call it her presentation. She's going to be presented to Queen Charlotte. I think it's at a sort of a ball and um, both her parents are dead and she lives with her uncle and aunt who um, all they are interested in is her making a very good match um, and becoming a duchess. Uh, however, there is a paranormal twist to this book and I think there's demons involved and she's got to sort of make a decision whether she's going to be a duchess or a demon hunter and there's probably some sort of love aspect to it. But yeah, I'm just really uh, pumped about this book. It was really interesting hearing the author read. Um, I really like uh, period setting books. It kind of made me think a little bit of um, The Parasol Protectorate by Gail Carragher, that sort of, um, that type of comical, strong heroine. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just really excited to read this. So that was a really good one to hear about. One of the books we heard briefly about, but we didn't meet the author was called Hour of the Bees by Lindsay um, Eager. This comes out on March 16, uh, 2016 and is a debut novel. I'll read you the back to this one um, because we didn't obviously meet the author. So I didn't get as much of a backstory. Um, while her friends are spending their summer having pool parties and sleepovers, 12 year old Carolina, Carol, is spending hers in the middle of New Mexico desert, helping her parents prepare to move the grandfather she'd never met into a home for people with dementia. At first, Carol avoids pricking prickly Grandpa Serge, whose face is covered in strange bumps that catch the shadows and don't let go, and whose eyes are impossibly old. But as the summer wears on and the heat bears down, Carol finds herself drawn to Serge, fascinated by his crazy stories about an ancient oasis in the desert with green glass lake and a tree that gives the villagers the gift of immortality. As the thin line between magic and reality start to blur, Carol must decide for herself what is possible and what it means to be true to her roots. This sounds uh, really exciting and really intriguing and um, yeah, 
I'm excited to give this one a read, so I was really pleased to find out about this one. Next up, we met the very intriguing Richard Curti. He is um, very uh, well known within TV and um, screenwriting, I think it is. He's a BAFTA winning screenwriter and has worked on things like uh, Going Postal, which was a Terry Pratchett adaptation, um, Sherlock Holmes, Robin Hood, Primeval, um, Sinbad. So he's done a lot of um, screenplays and adaptation from book to film. And so he decided he wanted to write a book. And we found out about his new book, which is called Maladapted. This book is sort of a science fiction story. It says, um, Ch uh, Cillian survives a devastating terror attack on a packed train. How did he escape when everyone else, including his father, was killed? Desperate for answers, Cillian turns to the mysterious Tess. In a secret hospital far away in the provinces, they make a shocking discovery about what is really happening in Foundation City. With his life suddenly in danger, Cillian needs Tess's help. But who is she and can Cillian actually trust her? Um, this says a must read for fans of Hunger Games, Alex Ryder, Maze Runner and Divergent. And... Um, Richard Curti before this also wrote a book called Monkey Wars which came out earlier this year and I hadn't read so I also picked up while I was there because this one sounds uh, really intriguing. It sort of um, stemmed apparently from sort of the idea of Animal Farm and Watership Down. I'll read you the back. When rhesus monkeys are brutally massacred on the dusty streets of Kolkata by a troop of power-hungry langua monkeys, Maiko's life is changed forever. As he attempts to help the surviving rhesus, he becomes increasingly entangled in the secrets that lie at the heart of the corrupt langua leadership. And as more blood is spilt, Maiko quickly realises that choosing between right and wrong will not be as easy as he first thought. Um, so this is a book written um, with monkeys as the protagonists and yeah I just think that sounds great and something really different so I'm really excited about both of these very different books. And then the final book that was in our bag and that we heard a little bit about is called 20 Questions for Gloria. This is by Martin Bedford and comes out in February. This is um, told retrospectively two weeks after the event. Um, Gloria has disappeared, or two people have disappeared, one of them being Gloria. Gloria has come back. She's being interviewed by the police about where she's gone. So we know she's back, um, but we don't know where she's been for the last two weeks and about the person that um, she went with. I think his name is Iman. Um, and so, yeah, the boy at the back just says, Gloria is tired of her ordinary life. So when a mysterious new boy bent on breaking all the rules strolls into her classroom, Gloria is ready to fall under his spell. By the time she learns the truth about him, Gloria is a long way from home. This sounds really interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about this one too. So there were some really great books. Um, there was a couple of books that we heard about that I haven't actually got um, copies of that I'm really excited about. Um, so I'm hoping that those copies might be coming out soon. Um, and as and when they do, I will show you. But those books I'm really excited to read. And thank you so much to Walker Books for inviting me. And yeah, th so that's those. So next stop on my journey was Forbidden Planet and I was very restrained actually and I just picked up uh, three comics so I'll show you those. The first two I just can't help myself and I think I'm going to have to buy it in comic form. I bought issues two and issues three three of Archie because I really enjoyed the first one and I'd bought that in comic form so I think I'm going to collect these as comics um, I'm going to read the first one again and carry on because I'm really enjoying it and so I'm really pleased I managed to find these and then I picked up another one that I just picked up really um, on a whim it's called Paper Girls it's issue one I don't know anything about it apart from that it's written by Brian K Vaughan um, and so I thought it's going to be good and I really like the art style in this so I'm really intrigued. It's quite a big chunky issue so I'm intrigued to find out more about this and I'll let you know as and when I read it. Then I went for a walk as I said 
and found myself at an Oxfam bookshop that seemed to have just loads and loads of books that I wanted. So I'll take you through those now. So the first book I picked up, I was really excited about because I'd ummed and ahed about picking this up after going to Cheltenham. If you've watched my Cheltenham vlog, you know I went to see a book, um, a, a book event called uh, World War One uh, Fiction, and there was um, Kate Williams who wrote Storms of War and Cat Clark who wrote we that uh, Claire Clark sorry that wrote uh, we that are left and uh, I didn't pick it up at the time and I kicked myself for it so I picked it up now and I'm really excited um from what I can gather from what Claire said at the event this is sort of set around um a family the only son has gone off to war and died and so they've sort of lost their nucleus their heir so to speak and it's about um, the mother and the father and the sisters and sort of who's going to be the heir and um, their situation. I'll read you the back because it always explains better. It's 1910 and 10-year-old Oscar Grunwald, the Melville family, is impossibly, incomprehensibly glamorous. Born into privilege their certainties are as unshakable as the walls of their Victorian castle. It's a world to which Oscar Mathematics prodigy and son to a penniless German composer has no wish to belong. But then Theo Melville is killed in the Great War, shattering his family's lives. Oscar finds himself drawn reluctantly into the gaping hole his death has left behind. As Theo's two Two sisters struggle to forge their paths in a world that no longer plays by the old rules. Oscar's life becomes entwined with theirs in ways that will change all of their futures forever. And so I'm really pleased that I picked this up. Next is a book I've seen a few people talk about and just sounded really good. And that is Church of Marvels by Leslie Parry. This is set in 1895. I think it's set around, um, yeah, Coney Island and sort of four people and their lives entwine. And I keep hearing really good things. So yeah, I'm excited to get to this one. Next is a book that is on the Man Booker list. And I've heard the Man Booker vloggers, if you haven't um, seen their videos, you should definitely catch uh, watch them. I think they are Jen Campbell and Lena from Just Kiss My Frog and uh, Lauren from Reads and Daydreams. And and um, Jean from Bookish Thoughts, I think it is, and Ariel Bissett. And I think Lena and uh, Lauren recently did a video on one of their channels um, about this one, which is, and this is obviously a, been a proof copy, um, Did You Ever Have a Family by Bill Clegg. And I just thought it just sounded interesting. It's about a, a woman, her life is totally destroyed when on the morning of her daughter's wedding, her, the whole family, um, who is it, the daughter, her daughter's fiance, her ex-husband and her boyfriend all die in a house fire. And it's sort of the aftermath of that. And it just sounds really interesting. So I'm excited to give this one. The next one is one I've heard a few things about and it's Read Me Like a Book by Liz Kessler. I've heard people say this is a really, really emotional read. I think it's a story um, about a girl um, and, and love and I think she's fallen in love with her female English teacher and so it's about um, sexuality and discovering um, your sexual orientation and coming to terms with that and I've heard really good things so I wanted to pick this up when I saw it. I've heard this one a lot as well and it's part of Oprah's book club so that's good um, and that's Ruby by Cynthia Bond. I think Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings is reading this soon. I think this book is sort of set in the 1950s. I think it's a sort of racial conflict story and um, I have heard really good things. Um, the Guardian has blurbed it luminous. Many will compare Ruby to the works of Toni Morrison, but it may be most apt to compare Bond to Gabrielle Garcia Marquez. Um, so that sounds uh, really brilliant. Um, and oh, the Oprah magazine says a powerful literary force. So I'm really interested to give this one. The final book I picked up, I don't, I've heard about this somewhere. Um, couldn't believe I saw it. I think I'd seen it advertised on the tube on the way into town today. And it's What She Left by T.R. Richmond. This one sounds intriguing. It's 
uh, about a girl called Alice Salmon. Um, it says, Alice Salmon died last year and the ripples from her tragic drowning could be felt in the news, on the internet and in the hearts of those closest to her. However, the man who knows her best isn't family or friend. His name is Dr. Jeremy Cook, an academic fixed on piecing together Alice's existence. Cook knows that faithfully recreating Alice through her diaries, text messages and online presence has become all consuming. But he does not know how deep his search will take him into this shocking story of love, loss and obsession where everyone, including himself, has something to hide. Um, yeah, this just sounds really interesting and I can't wait to get to this one. So rather a big haul of books, both um, kindly given to me by Walker Books, uh, bought from Forbidden Planet or from the Oxfam Bookshop. Um, yeah, lots of books. <laughs> lots I'm excited about let me know if you've read any of them as always and which ones you like and which one you're sure intrigued by and I look forward to speaking to you soon bye for now booktube